What's up guys, this is Nick at stridewise.com in Northampton, England, uh, the shoemaking capital of the UK with Chris Woodford, the founder of Crown Northampton, makers of the fanciest sneakers in the whole world. How's it going? Yeah, yeah good, mate. Yeah, yeah really good. good. We're here to answer the question that I get asked a lot, especially anytime I talk about sneakers because my channel tends to focus on boots. Can you resole a sneaker? Let's start with what are basic regular sneakers? Because the thing is, Goodyear welts are um, the probably the most popular example of a shoe that can be resold. That's what I'm wearing right now. These are Goodyear welted. And you can resole them because the upper is attached to a welt and the welt is attached to the outsole, which means you can detach the sole without doing anything to the upper. Yep. But sneakers don't have like a, a, a welt. No. But then again, not everything that can be resold yeah. has a welt. So a basic sneaker that's a cemented construction, yeah. right? Yeah, so yeah, it's just yeah. an upper is like yeah. kind of attached to a rubber sole with like an yeah. adhesive. Yeah. Can you resole that? In theory, if you, if like without a sidewall stitch. Yeah. It depends on a load of things. So each, each case is case by case. So if you're going to replace a sole that hasn't been sidewall stitched and it's just like a traditional trainer, then you'd rough the sole away mm -hmm. and then stick one over the top of what's left at the bottom of the sole. Okay. That's kind of resoling, but also if you're roughing it away and if it's got a rand that goes is stuck around the side of the shoe and the leather quality isn't very good and you take the sole off, you can peel away the surface of the leather. By using really good leathers, you haven't got a surface of the leather that will peel off. So when this sole comes off, when we resole it, none of this leather comes away with it. So you've got a slight gap before you get to the roughing margin. Okay, what it, so you're saying if the if the sole is still like attached to the upper pretty fine, it's just you've just worn down the sole a lot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You can basically like cut the sole in half and attach a new yeah, one to the bottom. Yeah, yeah. Just rough it off and okay. stick one flat on the bottom. Yeah. So the next question is because I'm thinking about like you know like Converse Chuck Taylors, right? Like these are these are uh, this is a canvas upper, so it's not even leather. But theoretically, if you're very close to these shoes, uh, you have a big emotional bond to them. You can cut the sole in half. And, uh, and, and glue a new one onto the bottom of it. But what if the sole is coming away from the upper? What if, what if that's what's happening? Can you replace that sole? If it's canvas, you've got to be real careful because you're going to rip it. The material is not going to be great. This is where it all comes down to the, the, the start. If you, if you haven't got a good material to start with and you're pulling a sole off, because you have to heat it up and you have to pull it off or cut it off or, or with this, get a knife down the side of it and slice it and cut it and peel it away. If the material's not good enough to start with and it hasn't got all the things behind it, like a really good stiffener and a really good toe puff and a really good lining, mm. all that could, and you tear the surface. Well, so let's talk about the material. So it sounds like it's not quite so much as if it's a cemented shoe or like a, a Blake Stitch or a Goodyear Welt, yeah, yeah. so much as it is how robust the upper is. I think so, yeah. Okay, so canvas upper. Risky, I wouldn't bother no, trying. No. And also you can just buy one that's cheaper than resoling it, unless yeah. you love the shoes. In that, in that kind of um, example where you're saying, my wife, my girlfriend has given me a pair of shoes it's been, and you wore them and you love them, put them on a shelf and love them up there. It's a lot safer <laughs> than ripping it apart and maybe having a dodgy lining that can't be repaired. Uh, okay, so canvas isn't so good. If it's a leather upper, what's gonna determine if it's a good enough quality for the, for the shoe to be like resold? Seeing a good cobbler and work, that cobbler working out what material that you're, that you're dealing with. But basically if it's a cup sole, and you can kind of peel away the top surface and you can see that the layer underneath it, if that starts going, I wouldn't risk it. Just peel the stitch away and have a look and just kind of feel if it's gonna come off. Thing is, if it does come off, you've gotta be able to replace it with the sole that fits that last. So you've gotta try and find the manufacturer of those soles. That's gonna be a challenge, unless the cobbler stocks right. the soles. You're differentiating a cup sole, mm -hmm. which is when it kind of Come, comes up yeah. like this, like so you can fit it in like a cup. Yeah. It's harder to get something that fits that when, as opposed to when it's just like a flat sole, because yeah. then you can just like cut the shape yeah, of yeah, the yeah. foot, right? A bit like welted, you trim a welted shoe. All right, so what's the opposite of a cup sole when it's just flat, a flat sole? Yeah. Okay, so if your sneakers have a flat sole mm -hmm. and the upper is pretty good quality, mm -hmm. uh, it's not, it probably isn't gonna be crazy hard to take the sole off without damaging the upper yeah. and finding a new sole. Yeah, you wouldn't actually it. touch the upper with any of machinery. If you had a shoe and the same sole for that shoe sitting right here and you wanted that on there, you can just, usually if it's an EVA sole, you'd be able to just rough it off, prime them and cement them and stick that on there. What you will need is a last in the shoe so that when you put pressure on it, the sole sticks. Do you know what I mean? Right. So that's what cobblers will cut like that. They'll, they'll have a last with it? Possibly, or they'll have something that will make fit in, inside the shoe okay. that okay. makes it all firm so that when you're putting pressure on it to stick the sole, 
it actually gets a good bond because you can't you can but it's not going to be great if you just you can if you stick a, a sole on just hit it with a hammer that might stick on but it won't be as secure as using a, like a press to really hold it shut and the only way to press it shut is like you'll see in our factory is is if you've got a this on a last and a press holding it down and the, and the bottom of it pushing it right up to make mm. it secure the cobblers will usually have something like that. You'd think that, well, maybe. Yeah. Well, ask your local cobbler. The ones I've seen. Then. Yeah, well, then, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a way for the average person to be able to tell if their shoe can be resold, like like if they if they uh, to tell if the upper is high enough quality that it can be resold. It's important to know that it's not just take the sole off, put a new one on it. That might be take the sole off, take the insole off, take the upper off, patch up the holes in the in on the lining. For, for example, when we redo when we resole, we take the sole off and we this whole um, counter inside counter lining, we replace that because that can be get worn through eventually. If it's worn through down in the lining, like under here, underneath the upper past the backer into the lining and that needs replacing you can patch that up a bit if it's down here because you're putting a footbed in that covers where that sits Does that makes sense but if you're using a cheaper shoe the construction isn't generally going to be like this anyway it's going to be it's going to be it's going to be a different construction to last it over and hand lasted and, and all put in place normally it's like force lasted and stitched kind of in a cheap manner mm -hmm. and just force lasted. and that that's when you take the sole off them you might pull that apart the bit underneath here so Go to your cobbler, basically, so they can go, oh, that's a shoe like that, that's really difficult. Here's your problems with resoling that, because unless you give me an example, mm. it's really difficult to know all those things that could be wrong with it, yes. but, but it's difficult. And it's worth, it's worth noting, uh, shoes are much more complicated than you might think they are. Mm, that's true. Even the world of sneakers. Now there is, once you get past this level of strictly cemented sneakers, mm -hmm. uh, like once you're past the, 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 the two, $300 mark for shoes, You'll often find these uh, sort of fancier sneakers that are a combination stitched and glue. Yeah. Like I know that there are a few brands uh, that, that, I, that I own that do that. Um, people will see the stitching on the shoe mm -hmm. and they'll think, oh, okay, so this is a sneaker that can be resold. Mm -hmm. uh, is it, but isn't it the case that when you see stitching, when a shoe is stitched and glued, that's usually just to make it harder for the salt, for it to, for the salt to peel up? Yeah. I think so. Than I think, it is think, to make it a resellable shoe. Yeah, I think most people usually glue and stitch a, a shoe on for security. Right. Like, if, if the stitch breaks, perhaps a bit of glue will hold it better. Because originally, there was no sidewall stitcher, they were just stuck in, sticking soles on. Um, you'd usually, it depends on the materials, like this is cordovan, so you'd, you'd prime it before you cement it. And the same with the sole, when it's lacto heavier, you need to rough the sole up a bit to give it a better bond. There's all those sorts of things, depending on the sole, depending on the upper, all those differences. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's difficult um, to see why you would stitch it and glue it without pulling it apart and the glue pulling the upper apart. Mm -hmm. But the way, we've done it that way. I think most people have done it so that they're stitched and glued so that when the stitch fails, the glue is a bit of security. Yeah. I think that's most. Or when the glue fails. Yeah, because most factories that mass produce sneakers, uh, or trainers, um, they, they don't do it in order to resell them. They do it in order to sell them at a certain price point and hope they'll come back and buy more. Most people don't want them to be resold. Right. No, I know. It's, it's, a, <laughs> it's a largely silly question, but when you're spending, th there are, yeah, there, there are plenty of yeah, sneakers yeah. That, are, that are over 300 bucks out there. Yeah, yeah. I've won a lot of them and people are like, I'm not spending this much unless I can resell. Yeah, that's fair enough, yeah. To sum up, the factors that go into if you can resell your sneaker, because it's not a yes or no question. Number one, it is if you get a cup sole as opposed to a flat sole, because cup soles will come up uh, onto the side of the shoe and they are less likely, you're less likely to like damage parts of the upper when removing the sole. Uh, this is not like a guaranteed yes or no, but these are, these are factors that go into what would make it easier to resole potentially. Uh, the other one, another factor is uh, the quality of the lining. If it's like, you know, canvas lining or like thin pig skin lining or not very high quality leather, uh, then that's more likely to be damaged when everything is getting taken apart and that can definitely make a big a big difference there. Uh, another, the most important one probably is the quality of the uppers. Uh, if it's like canvas or if it's lower quality uh, rubber or, or, or just like not a very durable leather or not a high quality leather, it's more likely to be like damaged, uh, especially if it's like, like, I don't know, like painted or something that's sort of dying, then you're very likely to lose some of that when the sole is getting taken off. And especially if it's not a cup sole, then that's gonna make it sort of really damage the uppers to the point that you might not wanna wear them. Uh, and then finally, the, the, the cork is also 
if your shoe, very few shoes, sneakers have cork in them. But if it yeah. does have cork in it, it's that just, also makes it a bit easier. Yeah, and it's sending it not to someone that knows like what the material was used when they were manufacturing it, mm. basically. And number five, uh, the skill of the cobbler. Yeah. Yeah. Skill and the last that fits in the shoe, the mold that fits in the shoe that allows you to put the sole back on. Yes. Same print. What Chris is saying here is it is easier to resole if you send it to the company that made the shoe in the first place. Yeah. Assuming they're accepting resoles. Accepting resoles. Yeah. Because they'll have the last and that makes it easier to resole yeah, as well. enough to do that. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Uh, <laughs> and Crown Northampton will do that for yeah, you. Yeah. Because yeah, <laughs> yeah. they, they resole their sneakers because if you, they, they sell a lot of sneakers that cost, you know, like over 500 bucks. So you, you, you can and you get those resold. It's important to know that. As you should be yeah, able yeah, yeah. to, as you should be able to spend that much on it. Uh, cool, all right, well look, that's that's the video. Yeah, cool. Cool, all right, well look, this is Crown Northampton. There's another video in the description uh, going through their factory if you wanna check that out and see more of the reasons as to why a, uh, a 700 something dollar sneaker might be worth it. Uh, and subscribe here to this channel as well for more things about high quality shoes and uh, casual stuff that's made to last a long time. Uh, thanks for coming on at your You're factory, welcome. Chris. You're very welcome. All right, there it is. Yeah, cool. Bye, YouTube. Goodbye. Ta-ta. <laughs> that cool? Yeah, that's good.